like to say great day to the viewing audience. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit, hosted by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, Omaha. My name is Stefan Williams, and I will be your host for this day's program. We're going to continue on with our series entitled, The Universe by the Pattern. And I'd like for, for uh, those of you that are viewing this broadcast to get out your Bibles, your notebook, your highlighters, your pens, your pencils, and study with us. Let's continue on. And I need you to pan right here for the viewing audience, please. It says, And it shall come, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's Joel, the second chapter, verse 28. Zechariah, the 12th chapter, verse 10. Acts, the second chapter, verse 16 through 18. These are the nine attributes that is poured upon all flesh by the Holy Spirit, according as his divine power. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and holiness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding and precious promises that by thee he might be partaken of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, strength, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, reverence, and to reverence brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things attributes be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. And that's Second Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 through the 8th verse. Pan up here for the viewing audience, please. The sun is a radiant heavenly body around which the earth and other planets re revolve. In the account of the creation, it is described as the greater light to rule the day. I need you to pan down here for the viewing audience. The sun is viewed as the greater light to rule the day. That's according to Genesis, the first chapter, verse 16. It was revered to as the vital power bringing forth vegetation. And we have here on the third day, okay, it says appearance of dry land vegetation, okay. And I need read for me, reader, please. Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter, verse 14. And also, 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, and verse 4, please. Deuteronomy 33 and 14, Holy Name Bible. And for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, 2 Samuel. 23 and 4 Holy Name Bible. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as a tender grass springing out of the earth by the clear shining after rain. Thank you, reader. Many of the people with whom the Israelites came into contact worshiped the sun. The, the Egyptian sun god, I need you for me, reader, please. Malachi, the fourth chapter, and verse 2, and I need you to pan right here for the viewing audience.
Malachi 4 and 2, Holy Name Bible. But unto you that rever my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Thank you, reader. During an eclipse of the sun, we need to get back here for a few noise. During an eclipse of the sun, the stars, we have stars here. During an eclipse of the sun, the stars become visible at the moment of totality when the moon, the moon is here, when the moon blots out the sun in totality, it is possible then, it is, it is then possible to see the stars which appear close to the sun. The sun represents, the, the, the sun represents Yahshua, the son of Yahweh. So the sun represents the true sun, right here. The true sun represents the son of Yahweh, okay? He is the true son, okay? Or the true light with the wells in us. The gospel, which means good news, revealed that Yahshua, the light of the world, is in us. I will point and use this one here. He's not in the physical body any longer. The physical body was consumed in a tomb. Follow me. The physical body was consumed in a tomb during his death burial. He resurrected a quickening spirit or back into a supercorporeal form. Okay? The same form here, the same form here. This is the form that he was in before he took on a physical body. He's not in a physical body any longer. He's in, I mean, not in a special, not, not in a special pair of body. But now he's telling back on inside of your, your body, which is his body, truly. Okay? Has a quickening spirit. All right? Before the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the world was in darkness and in death. Ignorance of Yahweh, ignorance, ignorance of Yahweh prevailed. But now in a dispensation of grace, which is on this side of the cross here, now in a dispensation of grace or spirit, the light dwells within us and we are delivered from death, we are delivered from death, okay, unto life. The moon law or darkness has been abolished. Yahshua and his holy angels have appeared. He said he would make his ministers as flames of fire. I need read for me, please, reader. Psalms. 104th division in verse 4. Also, I need read for me, reader, please. Hebrew, the first chapter, and verse 7, please. Psalms 104 and 4, Holy Name Bible, who maketh the winds his messengers and his ministers a flaming fire. Hebrews 1 and 7, Holy Name Bible, and the angels, he says, and the angels of and of the angels he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Thank you, reader. You need to pan back up here for the audience, please. Just hold the one in the frame. It says, stars are flames of fire representing angels or ministering spirits. When the sun shines, the moon and the stars are hidden because the sun outshines them all. When our understanding is illuminated, we see no, we see no one greater than Yahshua the Messiah. Dwelling in the light no man can approach unto. No idols can stand before him. No idols, no idols can stand before 
Yahshua the Messiah. When our understanding is darkened by the moon or flesh, we see the stars or angels, we worship creatures rather than the Creator in vanity of our minds. I need read for me, reader, please, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 17 and 18, please. Uh, Ephesians 4, 17 and 18, Holy Name Bible. This I say, therefore, and exalt through Yahweh, that ye henceforth live not as the heathens live in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Elohim through the ignorance that is in them because of the darkness of their hearts. Thank you, reader. The flesh is a veil. When the veil, man or idol, is removed, then we can see Yahshua. I need a reverend reader, please, in this pen right over here for the viewing audience, Tabernacle of Man. Okay? Your outer or your skin, per se, or this outer is likened to a veil. The veils that were in the tabernacle. You see where it says first veil here mm -hmm. in the holy place. We have second veil here in the most holy place, okay? Man made in the image of Elohim by the power of the tabernacle, tabernacle pattern, tabernacle of man, okay? Paying right here for the viewing audience. I need Reverend me, read, reader, please. 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verses 13 to 16. Also, I need Reverend me, please, reader, Isaiah, the 25th chapter, and verse 7, please. 2 Corinthians 6, 13 through 16, Holy Name Bible. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Be ye not in equal yoke together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what commun communication hath light with darkness, and what accord has the Messiah with Satan? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel. infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of Yahweh with idols? For ye are the temple of the living Elohim. As Yahweh hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Isaiah 25 and 7, please. Isaiah 25 and 7, Holy Name Bible. And he will discover, and he will destroy in this mountain the face mask cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Thank you, reader. Also, you can find that in Jeremiah the 29th chapter, verses 12 through the 14 verses. It says, in the flesh, we can only see flesh and depend on flesh. That's Isaiah, the 31st chapter, whole chapter, and Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, whole chapters. We worship ourselves. Put right back here, stay right here. We worship ourselves, our possessions, our ministers, and give them reverence rather than Yahweh. We cannot serve two masters. I need you me, reader, please, and I need you to pan over here for the viewing audience. We cannot serve two masters. I need you me, reader, please. Matthew, the sixth chapter, and verse 24, please. Matthew 6 and 24, Holy Name Bible. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve Yahweh and uh, Mammoth. Thank you, reader. Yahshua looks upon the heart. We must not have idols in our hearts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's Matthew the sixth chapter and verse 21 either on earth or in heaven. 
If we be risen with the Messiah, seek those things which are above, where the Messiah sits on the right hand of Yahweh. That's, that's, I mean, excuse me, that's Colossians, the third chapter, and verse 1. Let no man beguile you of, you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, and shooting into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together, increasing with the increase of Elohim. Now I need you to pan right back up for the being audience. Okay. And not be holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together and increased with the increase of Elohim. And that's Colossians, the second chapter, verse 18 and 19. Also, 1 Peter, the third chapter, and verse 4. The nine fruits of the Spirit equal to the nine divine attributes. And I need you to pan right here for the viewing audience, please. Framing the nine divine attributes, please. We have a pictorial illustration of a cloud here, depicting Yahweh. Yahweh is spirit manifested within the cloud, symbolizing eternity and Jerusalem above. Like I said earlier in our previous show, that Yahweh chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud is no descriptive or particular shape and form. Yahweh is not a cloud. He chose the cloud to symbolize himself once again, because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. Okay? I need reverend reader, please. Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 and 23, please. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, Holy Name Bible. Let me get a hold of this for a moment here. Now, in this cloud here, we have, back again, nine divine attributes, which is intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, love, beauty, and justice, power, foundation, and strength. And the nine fruits of the Spirit where, where, where the, the reader is about to read equals to the nine divine attributes. Read on, reader, please. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, Holy Name Bible. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no penalty. Thank you, reader. I need you to get right here, zero in on this moon here, or just right up here. Get all the frame, the frame this free, please. It says, the moon represents the spirit of deception. In its continual journey, journey around the sun, its continual journey around the sun, the earth carries along its satellite, the moon. These two heavenly bodies revolve around the heavens being mutually attracted to each other. The moon rotates on its axis in such a way as to keep the same side, face, toward the earth. The moon is a dead body or dead world, which has no light of its own. Just as Satan is dead and has no light, and no light, he gets his power from Yahweh Elohim, just as the moon gets its light from the sun. The moon exercises exercise a great influence upon the earth. Okay? Mother Earth, as it is called, represents the woman who is continually reproducing life. The moon is likened to Lucifer or the spirit of deception, which influenced the woman Eve, according to Genesis, the third chapter. And we have right here, 
just pan down here just for a moment here. We have what we call, which is down here, it says in, in organic earth. Okay, in organic earth, it's like to the earth. Okay, in organic earth. Okay, all right, and we have the moon here. Okay. One, one important influence of the moon, keep it right here. One important influence of the moon on Earth. One important influence of the moon on Earth, on Earth, is the physical force in, in, entailed in the gravitational pull and tidal action of, on waters. See, you have waters here. Waters beneath, waters above. Okay, waters above. Water beneath, okay? The earth is approximately three fourths water, tied. The alternate rising and falling of the surface of the oceans, gulfs, rivers, etc. And you can see it all down here, okay? All right? It says the alternate rising and falling of the surface of the ocean, gulf, rivers, etc., waters are likened unto people. And he and he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And that's Revelation 17 chapter and verse 15. The tremendous influence of the moon representing the spirit of deception causing the rising and falling of waters people is, as Jacob said, unstable as water. That's Genesis 49, chapter, verse 4. Paul speaks of one as being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. He feeds in the fourth chapter, verse 14. The rising and falling of, of water is like being tossed to and fro. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Elohim, take let him ask of Elohim that giveth to all men liberally, and unbraideth it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. That's James, the first chapter, verses 5 and 6. It says, The phases of the sun. For I am Yahweh. Went right back up here. Yahweh said that he is Yahweh, for I am Yahweh, I change not. That's Malachi, the third chapter, verse 6. Yahweh, Elohim, is unchangeable. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. That's Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verse 11. The moon, representing the spirit of deception in its revolution around the earth, presents phases of, or changes. The most obvious phenomenon shown by the moon is its apparent change of shape from a narrow crest to a full circle and back to the crescent form. So there we have it. That's the crescent right there. Right? You pan right down here for the viewing audience. That's the same moon, but now it's a full moon, okay? It changes, all right? The most obvious phenomenon shown by the moon is its, rep is, is its apparent change of shape from a narrow crest to a full circle and back to crescent form. This change of shape or phase is due to two circumstances. First, the moon shines only by reflected light. 
So once again, the moon gets its light from the sun. It's a reflected light, the moon. It does not have a bare light of its own. The moon shines only by reflected sunlight in second. As it revolves around the earth, as it revolves around the earth, different portions of its, of its sunlit side is presented to our view. Okay? I'm going to use a pictorial illustration. Look at the time. We have rays of sun. This is the sun, like the sun, the rays coming down onto the moon. Okay? And that will conclude another, another program. I'd like to leave you with these few words until we meet again. I'd like to leave you with these words righteousness, peace, and joy in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah.